Welcome to Sit Down News. I hope everyone's enjoying this Saturday. It's a beautiful day out today. As you can see, I'm wearing my Ratchet shirt. That's one of our sponsors, so Ratchet Clothing, a shout out to them. I'll also put a link to the Sit Down News blog, which I'm about to talk about. This has to do with Tony Muscatello's new uh, trial that was ordered by an appeals court. This was ordered some time ago, but I guess because everything that's going on now, the court system's backed up. So a little background on this case is that on February 6th, 2001, Gus uh, <clears throat> Bullis, which his first name is Constantinos, was driving his BMW in Fort Lauderdale and he became boxed in. And a Mustang came pulling up alongside him. The driver of the Mustang threw several shots into his car, hitting him. When all was said and done, he tried to pull away and he wound up crashing into a tree and dying. There was a witness by the name of Robert Puskaritz, and he seen that the car that pulled behind Bullis was it was a Volkswagen Jetta. He got a partial plate for that car. He got the whole entire plate of the temporary plate that was on the Mustang. Both these cars will trace back to someone named Anthony Ferrari. Anthony Ferrari winds up becoming Tony Muscatel's co-defendant on this case. But this Pus Puskarich wind up testifying to that, but made a statement at trial saying, I'm not 100% certain of anything that happened that night. So that was his testimony. But immediately after the shooting, someone named Dwayne Nicholson, who was an employee of Ferrari, goes to the police and implicates both Ferrari and Tony Muscatello as taking part of these murders. He also tells them that they wanted him to do these murders at one time, you know, and, but as I wrote, it was important to note that Nicholson from reporting it, testifying, and they wind up ultimately getting convicted, received a six figure amount as a reward from Crime Stoppers. So a little background on Gus Bullis. He was the owner of Miami Sub Sandwich Shops, and that was mostly in Florida. But he was also the founder of Sun Cruise Casinos, which was a fleet of luxury yachts that he converted into casinos. And he began earnings of tens of millions of dollars annually for this. He was making a lot of money, obviously. The attorney general's office got in touch with Bullis because he's a Greek citizen, not an American citizen. And as a result, they told him he had to sell his business. He sold the business to Adan Kadan and Jack Imberhoff. And these guys were partners. They bought the business, I believe, for $147 million or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong. And this was in like 2000. Two months later, after they bought it, this Kadan and Bullis got into a fist fight because they were jerking them around with payments. They didn't pay him in full. He also somehow kept, uh, I think, a 10% stake in the company or something like that. And they didn't, they weren't happy with that. But this Kadan goes on to, to testify that. He was afraid Bullis was going to the mob to have him killed. And so he went to Tony Muscatello, who he thought was in the mob, to protect him, which makes no sense, at, no sense at all. If you think the mob is after you, why are you going to someone else in the mob to protect you? I, I, don't, I don't know what that was about. Anyway, he testified to that. And... By August 11th of 2005, both Abramoff and Kadan were indicted by a, a Florida grand jury. They both were charged with um, fraud. They wind up making a fake wire transfer for $223 million to show to the lenders to get a $60 million loan. And they were ordered to pay $21.7 million in restitution on that. And then they were both sentenced to 70 months, but Kadan contacted law enforcement 
and he offered to cooperate on the Bullis murder. And he cut a deal, cutting his sentence down to 27 months. And he ultimately, as I said, testified at that case. I titled a, a, a paragraph in the blog and I wrote the linchpin because this ultimately, I think, wind up convicting Tony Muscatel. So in 2007, this Joseph Molly, who was a county jail inmate, and he was facing about a 75 year sentence he was facing for drug trafficking. So he negotiated a deal to give his testimony and only and received the time served that he was in waiting to go to trial, whatever that was, I, I don't know. So Molly was a former limo driver from Queens and he claims that he ran into someone named John J.J. Garino. Now, J.J. Garino comes from my old neighborhood, a wild guy. He was related to wise guys in the Gambino family. And he was also friends with someone named Peter Zaccaro. Peter Zaccaro also came from my neighborhood. And I spoke about him on another blog. But Peter Zaccaro winds up testifying in this case. And he testifies under another name named Nick the Maggio. But so this guy, Molly, said that he had a conversation with JJ and that JJ told him that his new name is the Sun Cruz Kid, referring to that he's the shooter on the case. Peter Sicara claims that Tony Muscatello came to him and offered, offered him $100,000 to do this hit, allegedly. And he later claims that JJ sends him the article kind of like as a trophy saying that he did the work and that he did the work for Tony Muscatello. So that statement that JJ allegedly made, I got the work from Muscatello, which both of these people have said ties Tony Muscatello to this case. But in reality, both Molly and Garino, J.J. Garino, are no longer alive by the time this all takes place. I, I'm not sure what happened to Molly, but J.J. Garino was, was shot and killed by someone in 2003 in Boca Raton over an argument over a deli. And supposedly he wound up smacking the, the owner and the owner pulled out a pistol, shooting him a couple of times and killing him as J.J. But as I mentioned, so Tony Muscatello was convicted of first degree murder. In 2013, he was sentenced to life in prison without parole. The fourth district court of appeals in Florida found that the statement, uh, I got the work from Muscatello, was improper and it was coming from a second hand from a dead man, meaning J.J. Carino and, and this other guy, this Molly. I'll read what the court had said in their decision. They said, our Supreme Court has consistently stated that overwhelming evidence is not the test, particularly where the erroneous, erroneously admitted evidence becomes a focal point of the trial, meaning that statement ultimately convicted Tony Muscatello. Where this case is at now, I think they're getting ready to try to put it together to have a trial. And how I know this is a Florida prosecutor by the name of St uh, Stefan Zakor a couple of months ago, and I, I'm not going to go too much into what was said, but it was unprofessional, the way he contacted me. And basically, he wanted me to come and testify to any murders Tony Muscatel and I may have or may not have discussed. And as I said in the blog, nevertheless, that is not happening. And um, so that's where they're at. As a result of that telephone call, that's how I know they're probably in preparation for this new trial. And, you know, I wish the best for Tony Muscatello. I think that he won the appeal on good merits because how could you convict someone on the words of a dead person that came from another dead person 
that a witness is testifying to and saying, oh, yeah, he also sent me the newspaper article, you know, saying as bragging rights that he did the did the murder. So I don't know where it's going to go. I just know I'm not going to be there. And I know I better get never get in trouble in Florida. <laughs> be, I'll be in big trouble down in Florida. Anyway, I wish Tony Muscatello the best. He's up there in age. He was a dear friend of mine. Also, he's been in this whole time. So I don't know what's going to be the outcome there, but I do wish him the best. May justice prevail. And that's really about it. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my day. I hope, like I said in the beginning, I hope everyone's enjoying theirs as well. And that's about it. Ciao for now.